Ooh, why do truck drivers love a Tesla? Because we got the best cars. If you see this car right here, Hot Cheeto Flame, it's elite. Now, we're going to hop into this video and we're going to explain why truck drivers love Tesla. And most of you guys hate Tesla. Huh. And who's the bloodline and the blood veins of the United States of America? It's our truck drivers bringing goods and services and products to your front door and moving it throughout America. Also, the railway does that, too. But shout out to the truck drivers. Let's get into this video. Let's get active. We're going to look at a clip and we're going to actually look at the details. I've done it. I covered that video before. I really want to dive into this details. Now, right here, Tesla News. Shout out to X Platform. It's the best platform in the galaxy. News, Tesla Semi Program lead says that the pilot Tesla Semi fleet has driven over 7.5 million kilometers to date. There's even a Semi that has driven more than 400,000 real-world kilometers in less than 18 months, all at the max gross weight limit. We have driven more than 7.5 million kilometers with the pilot Tesla Semi fleet. Now, this is not the most number of miles by a heavy-duty fleet. Again, I applaud all the work the other guys are doing. They're doing great work. But why are we proud of this number? It's because we've done it with a relatively small number of trucks in a relatively short period of time. And it's because of high efficiency, and high range, and megawatt charging that that is possible. Just as a data point, we have a truck in our fleet that is less than a year and a half into operations. It has driven more than 400,000 kilometers. Those are not simulated, those are not accelerated, those are real world miles. And those have been all done at North American gross vehicle weight limits to enable 15 million ton kilometers of work. That's a result, guys. I, I, I swear, most of the time you guys are talking about you love truck drivers, you love those guys, they're so important. If they're so important, we want them to be safe, right? And then hands down, Tesla's just going to be the safest vehicle. We already know that. So let's stop acting like they're not, all right? And here's a full discussion of Tesla Semi lead and then PepsiCo from IAA today, all right? And so at the one minute, PepsiCo is already seeing using electric trucks provide lower cost solutions over time. And it only makes sense, you know? People have been saying this for the longer time, that this car and this vehicle is going to provide a better solution over time. So we're going to skip... We're going to skip a little bit for it so you guys can see a little bit of the video. Let's get active. Let's get involved. Back in 2018, 2019, um, we as a company, we have large sustainability goals um, in, in within emission savings and um, electrification of the fleet and in general fleet sustainability is a huge factor to that. So part of this journey that we're going along is that electrification is able to solve a lot of the um, efforts needed to, you know, provide and, and run a sustainable fleet and then reduce our emissions, you know, over the next several years. And, and regardless of the emissions, guys, we're just trying to make a more effective and efficient car. We got to skip forward because I don't want to hear that jargon straight out the gate. I want to hear some technicalities because that's what we do over here. So, yeah, I mean, when we, uh, TCO is the baseline of every decision that we make is ultimately, is this going to be the right tool for the job? And this is a business tool. Um, as much fun as it is to design our passenger car products, uh, which has a different set of motivations sometimes for those customers. You know, for Semi, we still want to make it fun. We still want to make it a great experience. But at the same time, uh, the underlying thesis has to remain true, is it needs to be the lowest total cost of ownership. And so that starts with every you know, little design detail. And that can be from how we choose a uh, design in terms of materials or process in order to drive uh, costs down out of the product. We look to leverage the scale of other pieces of our business where we can take componentry over and sometimes it's simple things like if you get into the truck you'll see that we use uh, the same screens that we do in some of our other cars but also we carry over uh, much more intricate bits such as uh, powertrain pieces we get to leverage that validation and that volume in order to drive down uh, the initial price for our customer and then another big and guys, and also see that your bag of chips could be cheaper, right? Because the transportation and then the cost for ownership of these vehicles are way lower and these delivery vehicles are needed and necessary. Now, again, that's very interesting. That That's something that Tesla does quite well when it comes down to the expenses and operating costs or the cost of goods and services. And to be able to have a vehicle like this, to change the game, to make it more effective and efficient for the company to operate and reduce the cost and expenses, that difference can be transferred to the customer. So when you guys go and buy your chips, your Cheetos, if it's 20 cents lower, 
You got Elon to thanks. He got Tesla to thanks. Okay. But net net at the end of the day, and it could possibly be passed on to shareholders. If you're a shareholder, all right, get active, get on Robin Hood. But again, this is not investment advice. Do your own due diligence. I don't want normies coming after me. Let's hop back into the video. The big thing is efficiency. You know, we really pride ourselves at Tesla of making the vehicle as efficient as possible. And that really is the biggest lever for driving down costs. Uh, and there's two reasons for that. One is when it comes to just the raw measurement of efficiency and the kilowatt hours consumed, we're directly driving down the amount of energy you need in order to continue to do the job. But also, when we look at it on a range basis, if we can be more efficient, it means that we get to remove battery from the vehicle. And so that's a, a great lever in a way to reduce the upfront cost of the vehicle as well. So it really starts from the initial design scope and we say, well, how do we make the vehicle the most efficient? That really informs the shape, that informs the power train selection, you know, everything we do along the way in order to continue to improve the vehicle and ultimately drive down the cost. And then from there, it really extends through the rest of the vehicle design process. We look for areas that we can um, you know, extract the most value out of our supply chain and drive down costs that way. But then also service. See, I, I know this might be. I know you might fall asleep on this information, but this information is essential, okay? And that's why most of your guys' housing financing is out of whack in order because you just don't look at your expenses. You don't look for efficiency. Now, in Tesla, this is what we do. We look for room efficiency. We try to design the vehicle or the product around efficiency. We try to delete steps because the deleted step or the best steps is no steps. Shout out to Elon. It decreases the human error. It decreases the lack of quality that could be established on the quantity, especially large volume. So the least amount of steps and the least amount of processes and the least amount of pieces only allows for it to be a better effective and efficient and more productive car. Not necessarily productive, but we attempt not to lose that productivity and in our attempt to reduce the steps and pieces out of the phase, right? We're looking to enhance the productivity at the same time. And that is the science. That is the formula. That is the principle. That is the model of Tesla. That is the core foundation of operations and companies like SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink. And you'll see that if you just look in the finer details, if you watch the videos about the factory and you watch videos like this from industry leaders who utilize the services and products and say, man, I've done the numbers. And whether it's the mega pack, the battery pack, the car, Model Y, the semi truck, all these products are more effective and efficient. And then the cost of ownership is reduced. And my return on investment is seven to five years, et cetera, et cetera. These are the elements that you look for a great company. Now, let me get off and let him continue to go. Service and maintenance. And we leverage our software, our vertical integration there, along with our in house service learnings from our passenger cars. We bring that same thinking over to our heavy duty fleet to close that feedback loop that we get from the service folks in the field to make jobs easier, get the truck back on the road, reduce service costs, keep part costs low, and ultimately deliver that entire idea of lowest total cost of ownership. Um, plus, again, like we try to make it fun, so we want your drivers to be able to drive it, and you know, ultimately we view that as like a retention piece. It's a recruiting cost that you and other fleets hopefully you know, don't have to bear by making the truck fun to drive. Exactly, and, and that's a big piece. That's a big piece for sure, because truck driving is not fun. But from what I hear, a lot of truck drivers are like, I don't want to go back. This truck is cool. Look at it, guys. Look at this truck. Come on, man. I, I'm about to become a truck driver just because of this. Semi truck event. I hope you like what you see. We're confident that this is a product that is better in every way from a feature standpoint that wins on economics against uh, uh, diesel trucks in a worst case scenario, and that defeats rail um, in a convoy scenario. Woo! And that's the main point, guys. So this is what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be about the environment, the climate. We're talking about it's going to beat you on economics. And beat on rail? Rail is some of the cheapest form of transportation, especially moving goods and products, guys. So that's a big statement. But if you could beat rail, already just beating diesel, but rail? 
oh my gosh, the economics is ridiculous. And that's what we want. We want to reduce the price. You're thank you. Thank you. And you're welcome. You know, you guys don't want to give us the credit. You don't want to give Elon Musk the win, but I am. I'm going to give Elon Musk the win and then followed up. I'm going to give America the win, not Americans, because you guys are not seeing this. You better update your goddamn roster. You got to update your software to the latest stuff that we're dropping out here. Again, this is not investment advice. Do your own due diligence. But if they create a kick at product, that everybody wants to drive, especially the truck drivers, and it's more safe for the truck drivers and the economics are there. That's all we need to talk about. So you conservatives think we're sitting up here talking about the planet, and you liberals too, always talking about the planet. We're talking about economics. We're talking about safety. That's it. End the conversation. That's where I dropped the mic. I'm tired of talking to you normies and laying the smack down on you every day on this goddamn channel. Everyone hates Tesla. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And remember, every time you come on this channel, that I'm going to give you guys a smackdown because it's electric. Boogie, you, boogie, you.